I totally got that on video. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I uh, got cut off on this one road. I was telling you how, what the 123 is like to drive, especially the wagon. Well, it's like 20 feet long, so you got to take that into account. first-hand view of what it's like to drive a 123 wagon obviously the space in the back is why I like these so much there's room for days and in general it's just a very a car that you can it's versatile I guess that's the best way to put it you use it for everything she drives it, Love it all the time I drive it all the time and frankly it's been the most dependable car that we've had in our lineage of cars. <laughs> uh, power, I mean, it's an inline five turbo. So like this is like a quarter throttle, pretty good. The turbo makes a huge difference when it comes down to, if you're looking at, well, I need something that can keep up with today's traffic, then I probably would not look any further than a turbo. The, the five-cylinder turbo, you know, it's still sluggish on some days, but it's frankly pretty quick for what you get. I, I'm kind of shocked how fast it is for being how old this car was, is, I should say. And uh, it, it keeps up with traffic just fine. You can do 85 all day long with it. Brakes, it's got disc brakes all the way around. Brakes are good. It's a standard automatic transmission. Power steering is, is great. I would say, you know, with any W123 is the steering feels slightly heavy. So, wow, these trees are pretty. I know, they're beautiful. <laughs> you get a fall tour as well with this drive. <laughs> but yeah, I would say the steering is somewhat heavy. So, and, and all W123s that I've owned, the 240, the 300 coupe, all that. It's just, that's how they are. And I actually like that. I would say one of my best, the best attrib attributes about this car is how smooth it is and what I mean by smooth is it literally it drives effortlessly on the road like it doesn't some cars they take effort to drive I feel you know and they they don't talk to you it seems like you're driving a robot 123s they talk to you they love to drive on the highway I think that's where this car excels is on the highway but they really are a joy to drive because they have a very signature sound, especially these, whoa, that was, uh, <laughs> I just saw that. <laughs> but you know, the, there's a signature sound. I don't know if you can hear. Oh, I love the sound of the turbo. It's like my favorite part about this car. I did a side exit exhaust on this, and the minute I fired it up the first day, I heard that turbo and I was like, oh my gosh, it sounds like a, a semi-truck engine is in a wagon, but it's not too loud where it's obnoxious, but it, it sounds really good. And I think that's why I really like these engines. I'd say the drawback of a, a five-cylinder turbo is the workspace. What I mean by workspace is like replacing stuff, working on it, it's a lot tighter 
than the, what the 240 was. You could reach around and reach on the back side of the engine on the 240. On the 300, I mean, you have to really finagle your way into parts, especially from the back. Like the alternator, I felt it was kind of a pain to replace because not to take it out or loosen the bolts, but to simply just get your hand up in there and get everything on. So it's, it's definitely a tighter workspace. And I put that as a con. Um, you know, another con is a diesel. So winter driving, you have to be kind of mindful about anti-gel. They're a little temperamental to start in the winter. The 240 was more temperamental than this, in my opinion. I think this is, uh, it's, it's been a good winter starting vehicle, but there are days where it's, you know, below zero, you're going to want a block heater and uh, you're going to want a good set of glow plugs. Glow plugs on a good set on a cold day will save your butt, especially when you're in a remote spot. And what in the heck is going on here? Speaking of remote spots. Remote spots. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Wow. All right. I totally got that on video. <laughs> yep. So I uh, got cut off on this one road. I was telling you how, what the 123 is like to drive, especially the wagon. Well, it's like 20 feet long, so you gotta take that into account. It's long. It's the longest vehicle I've ever owned besides my Toyota RV. But that's okay, you get used to it. The field of view is very good. You know, I'd say that's pretty darn good. Being an 80s car, the noise highway and road noise in general is of course going to be louder than your typical new car and this motor is inherently loud it sounds like the mix of well people come up next to you and say hey buddy you got a rod knock or do you have a Cummings truck engine swapped into that so there's a multitude of questions people ask when you pull up to one of these because it is a very distinct engine sound. The inline fives, in my opinion, sounds incredible, especially under revs. And it's, you know, I mean, 4,500 RPM is on, it goes there and it pulls all the way to the red line, which I think is theoretically 4,800 on this, which is very high for a diesel. Obviously the uh, interior aesthetics is, it's a very driver oriented car. I mean, this field of view is awesome. It's got a manual sunroof, which is pretty cool. I mean, you know, just try to go off the cliff while we're skirts. <laughs> skirts. <laughs> Some have electric sunroofs. I'm happy I have the manual because it's one less thing to go wrong. It has electric windows. Um, that's a great little feature to have on these. I mean, you're pretty comfy. I'm really comfy. I would say that's another factor that's a pro of the 300 or the 123 in general is the seats are incredible. Like, they're just the right amount of bolsters on the side. And I, I feel like, you know, some seats when you sit in them, they're like, oh, they kind of push you forward or back, or there's almost too much lumbar. And honestly, these are the most comfortable seats I mean, we, we did a solid trip all the way to Lincoln, Nebraska, eight hours, and, uh, or not Lincoln, it was Omaha. Yeah. And it was incredible. I mean, I was not one bit sore. So it, when I say it's a very driver-friendly, travel-friendly car, you could do a road trip across America in one of these, and you're not gonna be sore. And that says something about these being that they're from the 80s, and they're still a really good touring car. I think that, speaks volumes as far as the design engineering behind you know the driver aesthetics I guess would be the proper word to say once again I said the steering is a little heavy comparatively to like if you were to drive like a Toyota Camry or a Porsche or any of those I feel that the steering is very light my E30 my BMW 30 is very light this it's it's a heavier feel and and you get used to that but I think it's a heavier feel for a reason because these frankly drive incredibly well on the highway and on the road. There's something about how a 123 drives, it, uh, it just kind of sets itself into that corner and it stays there. There's no body roll. It takes bumps probably the best out of any vehicle that I've driven, especially from the 80s era. It's kind of freaky how good this car takes bumps and potholes because frankly this one hits <laughs> potholes like they're 
hundred dollar bills in the middle of the road. I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but truly, they take bumps incredibly well, and all 123s. But you know, I figured having the wagon is going to be really stiff because of the the wheelbase distancing and this drives over anything incredibly well. One amazing fact, and I'll show it to you when the car's at a standstill, it has the original air suspension. So I'll shut it off, and the rear end will lower, and when you turn it on, it literally raises. And it's uh, just another suspension dampening, futuristic 80s concoction that the uh, engineers over in Germany thought would be a good idea. And amazingly, it's very reliable. When you hear air suspension, you think, oh boy, this is gonna be a headache. This is gonna fail. This has the original air suspension and it is not leaking. It doesn't give me any headaches and I am at right now 356,000 miles. Yeah, that's some miles right there. So yeah, I, I would say, I don't know, what would you say is a cork about this car? Or what do you like about this car? The rear facing seats. Oh, well yes, what about driving? Okay. Just how reliable <laughs> it is, I guess. Everything you've already said. <laughs> yeah, so all in all, I think it's, it's, uh, I've, when someone asks, well, can you daily drive a 300? Could you daily drive a 300 TD wagon? I would choose to daily drive a 300 TD wagon just about over any vehicle, modern or vintage, because simplicity, it's all analog. Nothing really electrical to fail. That's probably my favorite part about this car. You do cars, you have to, it's like starting the SS Enterprise. You gotta push on all these buttons and the computer's gotta turn on, then it's gotta dial up just to turn on. And this car, you turn, the glow plug light comes on and voila. So you're probably wondering what's the acceleration like on a 1985 300 TD because everybody says if you read online that they're the slowest car in the world. Well, they're not the fastest cars in the world, but I don't think they're that slow. So let's see what the acceleration is like on one of these. daily drive a 300 could you daily drive a 300 TD wagon I would choose to daily drive a 300 TD wagon just about over any vehicle modern or vintage because simplicity it's all analog nothing really electrical to fail that's probably my favorite part about this car you do cars you have to it's like starting the SS Enterprise you gotta push on all these buttons and the computer's got to turn on then it's got to dial up just to turn on and this car you turn the glow plug light comes on and voila. <laughs> 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 